the other side of the building because I know that side, not this one. So I met people who were coming here, then they said, Rabaka Wana Makura, so I'm sure some are here to come and see you because they were happy that you are here just specifically to talk to the religious sector because I wanted to know why they are so interested in Baba. So they said no because we want to see him because we understand that he's coming to meet with us as the religious sector. So they are here premium to listen to you. Thank you. If you can just clap your hands for our premium
in the city of Tswai. So we will also arrange a separate session with the traditional leaders. I know uh, that uh, the traditional leaders in the city of Tswai have witnessed all these things because they come to attend council meetings. They know Basala Nabantu. They know the problems uh, on the ground. They know that where things are not happening, they know better. Uh, so I will also do that. So having said, said that, I want to say that uh, we operate as a country under the Constitution of the Republic. Uh, the Constitution of the Republic gives uh, all the different spheres of government, responsibility, and functions. And the good thing with our constitution is that it says if this uh, sphere of government fails to do its work, who must intervene? Uh, so uh, it says, for example, it gives powers to municipalities and it says under section 139, when the municipalities fail to do those, carry those functions, who must intervene? Says it's first is the province, but if the province fails to intervene, then the national government must intervene. But it also says, uh, if a province fails in its area of responsibility now, those powers it is given and functions, if it fails, under section 100, it says national government must intervene. Uh, it also clarifies if national government uh, uh, doesn't do what it is supposed to do, there's no other government, you know. Uh, but it has got safeguards about when that happens, what must be done. So I want to therefore say that but I, I do, I travel throughout the city. And I, can I just, I request that I must not be recorded. I think there is a phone that's really, that it, it's, I can't see. That phone was like, yeah, closing. What I'm telling you is not a secret. It is out there in public. So it's not about uh, secrets or not. So there's no secrets I'll tell you. It's already out there. It's just that when, when, when it, the phone is facing me, as I was saying, I had difficulty with being able to see. So, there are, there are, there are leaders of various denominations in here. You, you also live with people yourselves. Uh, Akire, the people who come to your churches are people that they are residents. And you also yourselves, your establishment, every church in every area is itself, also in accordance with the regulations. You have services, you must be connected to electricity. Akire, kere, 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 so you start connecting illegal. This is your canyon, but it's even your canyon. Even if it's a habit, I'll be there. Okay, okay, okay. The certificate is our kereke. It operates more. It's a matter of getting to the level. Must follow regulator everything. Kurumu pino baru naka ofela kumu must follow. Our lives are under municipality. So everything, your own house, when you have everything there, connection, refuse removal, water, electric. Even when we have to build a school as the provincial government, build a clinic or build a wall, you know that we can't occupy it if it is not officially, if the municipality has not given us the certificate and has not connected water, electricity, sewer to that. But then we have a scrap more. We have some matzo, okay, the board. We have to buy a scrap. You know, there is a clinic uh, that's called Mandisa Shikleka. We have been building it in a scrap. 
We finished that clinic in August last year. Uh, there's another clinic called Kekana Gardens, which we finished and opened. I was there. I've been there twice. But I've been to this one of mine, Sachikoeka, last year. As we speak, that clinic is complete everything. But it is not officially open to the community. The community there needs that clinic like last year. But it's not op opened, it's not in use. You know why? I want to tell you, even with schools, uh, if a, we can build a school, but the municipality must give us a certificate and they must connect it. So I'm giving you an example about this clinic because I'm going there tomorrow. I promise the people of Haman's crowd that this clinic will be open last year before the end of the year when I went there. I'm going back there tomorrow. The certificates of that clinic has been sitting in this municipality without being signed, without being authorized, without being connecting electricity, without connecting sewer, without connecting water. The clinic was completed in August last year. The certificates are sitting here. And I am not surprised that this, so because the municipality is not working, and it's not, it's not only here. So, so I think it's important first to explain, we have been very, very patient. Some of the people who are sitting here have been phoning me left, right, and center. We have a problem. I was in Atrechville, but in Atrechville where Mabudwani, in the little of Tapu Alexandra, they put a visa. They were saying to me, we never, Atrechville was so clean that we never had the rats that we now have. Big size rats. I go Alexander, they crossed the highway. You go Atrechville, one in Kashwamu. It's not only in Atrechville, in Soshambuve, in Mabopane, in Karangua, when I get there, people tell me the problems that we never used to have here. Yes, things were not perfect, but they said to me, premium, small things, the whole internal state of the province address, the whole week will not protest you, but they really that when we sit down with people to ask them, these are very small things that must be fixed by a functioning municipality. So I, the same thing. I go to, I go to, to, I go to Mami Lodge. That's why we don't have any flats more again. But we have never felt about that before again. We do all the things that we need to do on television. How much money we complain? We complain about my poor flat. Where the man has said, but you see, where the man put. I'm here to confess my sins to you. When they complain, that they say, everywhere I can tell you, how many problems? Or how many problems? problem is electricity co interfered. Everybody, remember what my Lord Lucas said. So, we get the piece of land to help settle the people. We get the piece of land, we even get the money. We even talk to the owners of that land. They say, no, government can pay us later. But you cannot do certain things if the municipality doesn't do. Every little space, Maspala in the end can be on your, can block progress or it can facilitate progress. So, how much of a complainer? So, I want to say to you, it's not only in the government, it's in the government, it's in the government, it's in the government, So the Lord, it's in the government, it's in the government, it's in the government, it's the government, it's in the things it's in the government, it's the government, it's in the government, it's in the government, it's in the government, it's in the 
that issue which is supposed to be there. But if it's province, we will be there the following day. There was a big hole, uh, what the sinkhole. We fixed that road in the shortest space of time because it is us who are responsible for the big road. So I, my job is not to complain. I can, leaders are not about complaining. I how did you disaster my hand and okay again? We are no complainer, we no complainer to them. Uli Muruti, Uli Pastor, Uli Tauva Kirek. How did you disaster my hand and okay again? We are no complainer, we are no complainer. Uli Mbe, Lady Dante, no complainer, go by name. To the children, you are coming, you have your hands in the, on your head. You are complaining to the children about things that you need to fix. I get all these complaints. So we have some. So the first thing I want to say to you, we have been very patient as the Gauteng Provincial Government. How can I complain? I complain. Don't want to take any more, without exception. How about two months prior to another problem? I took, I took, I took Solim Sima and there. Half it a model and no, not to go a man, and they say, I'm right. Are they are, my yan, a hundred yan, or one of the other one of the living you spay one more. Or about our mammy's yan, I are right. That's what I know every day. I told him right there. You have the luxury of drinking this water in front of the bed. You don't drink it every day. How about one of the mammy's yan? You can't keep forcing them. It's all right. Until Human Rights Commission came. By it's a test, but we tell it. So somebody would have said, hey, can you follow the environment? They say this water is dirty, it's political. We have been patient. So one thing after the other. So the provincial department here, they are cocked up. So they have been writing letters. What point you are about? What you let on a little yard, eh, but you are Bassa qualify you. What point you are about body bodybuilders? Let's have a bodybuilder. You are going to be part of the one million bodybuilder. Who will turn a little natural fella to one a week? One million. One million. What point you are for the position? The same as a qualifying. Give them who more. The letters get written. Please correct yourselves. It was done by MEC Paul Mashatile. When he was still the MEC for Cocta. It was these things were done by MEC Uhuru Miwa. The irregular appointments were appointed by Tubasa qualifying. I don't want to talk about parties. I just want to talk about the government of Tswana. But I can't even to the market or no, but one point to one must qualify by point to one chip at the eight. Now, correct tanking to say if you have done irregular appointments, you have appointed people must qualify it. So they have been receiving letters. Correct this irregular appointment. That it's a little on it. That's on it. They were able to correct them, but others, even now, up until recently, I know. Uh, the head of uh, somebody who was in charge of a very sensitive area who, who saw irregular appointments. And then a very sensitive thing here, how many challenges are there? Let's not tell it there. I see the mass part of our fellows and only challenge. But I didn't make sure that I didn't budget the air how many budget they would such a challenge for national government? Yamatu, but Babata Matu. You know, I've been everywhere in Swan. Housing is a big problem. Big, big, big problem. Every year, the mass ballots at Metro, the total budget, directly budget is for national government, it's a Uruna province, but it's already earmarked. But now we just make sure that it goes to the Right municipalities. Any bit of the USDG, Urban Settlement Grant. Runare Akadi top structure, but there must be the infrastructure bill. 
Haji Bua, just in this financial year, the city of Swazi has returned more than half a more than half a billion rand. Half more than half, they could not spend it because they are not functional. If we tell a guy to the if we tell our national national ego if the province in mass palatini. As if the, the, the city, the residents of the city are about him out. It's, so there are four types of grants where they have not been spending that money and the money gets reallocated otherwise. Apart from irregular appointments on tenders, let's like see. Now the things of irregular appointments on tenders are done by different municipalities, I can tell you. From as provincial government, NEC, Wama, 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 Wama Shere. That's the Hillary Machele. NEC Wama Shere. Part of her job is to make sure that all municipalities, they use their money properly. Those that have, others have very little. They, are, they must be helped to have more money. So, Apart from that, irregular appointments, irregular expenditure, irregular contracts has been the feature of what did we do before? Say, we are aware that this and that is not done according to the law. And I don't want to, to waste Nabiabaruti because in our documents, we cite every law, we cite every piece of legislation. Mona, halala, telamula, oitze. What the first step is to ask them to correct it. That's what you do. Akira Hamana Asinze. Ulika mu correct. Asinik. Aushapi Chupapili. So we have every step of the way, every step of the way, we have been writing to them this problem. Until last year, any, so now, apart from things that were not going right, the municipality started also not to make decisions on things that matter most. Let me see my email writing to them. On each of these things, the MEC was writing. So I've said before, in the MEC MEC said it. Again, after the election, he was also writing to them. Correct the following. Uh, there's something that you are not doing. Uh, sort out refuse removal. Basic things. Sort out matey, supply of water is a basic municipal function. I know on electricity there are areas supplied by ESCOM. We can't blame them. Uh, like Hammond's Crab, I not Hammond's Crab, but uh, Winterfeld. I know. So there, if it's areas supplied by ESCOM, we know who to talk to. We talk to ESCOM. Uh, my office has spent a lot of time talking to ESCOM about the problems of electricity in Hammond's Crab because ESCOM supplies directly to Haman's ground. So, so there are things step by step. Then, we also know that in the, <clears throat> as things stand, Maspala Ona Haona Manager. Lika Shenobadi Kile Ukoba. And uh, let me tell you, as we speak now, Haona Budget. You know these things. You know, municipal manager. Let's have a Habakopa, King Dothan. So you, you, somebody want us, the citizens must be spectators. Now, the, let me tell you, the provincial government of Houghton doesn't, doesn't, doesn't just rush into an intervention. We take a lot, sometimes, but to Barunaba complain, I know. Uh, you know the messages I get from some of some of the areas where people say, "But Premier, we have been raising this thing with you forever." 
and there's nothing you are doing. You know what the problem is in the municipality. I say to them, patience. Okay. Sometimes, but you are the chief in the area. People want things, especially young people, sometimes want things to be rushed. Uh, people in your congregation sometimes may may feel even live at Bamu Bamu Dibu Bafa Rapi. Bana no friend what to feel Lulubo. You remember the Israelites when they were crossing after they left Egypt? The journey was tough, very, very tough. At some point they were running out of patience for Moshe. I cannot say. Yeah. They were really, really running out of patience. And they sometimes say, no, you have brought us all the way here to die of hunger. Take us back to where we were suffering. It was better there than. So even live at Banano Ferabi. But when you are a leader, what you do? You cancel patience. That things must be done properly. And, and I can tell you it's everywhere. I, there's no community. I've been to Pretoria North, Pretoria West here. It's a mixed community where people are complaining about hijacking of properties and so on. And then the basic the basic way of enforcing bylaws has collapsed, total collapse. I go to them and cancel process, patients. Let's follow the procedures. What they you go everywhere, and people say, no, but premier, are you the premier or you are not? Yeah. Things are just getting, have you ever stood in front of your congregation? When people say, Murut, Mara Murut Waruna Orjoa. Usase umfundis wetu orkacha. Asuwa asuwa unche wena. Where, where? You must be able to give leadership. But you can't give leadership out of your head. Uh, religious people, we either use the Quran or we use the Bible. Isn't that your constitution? Yes. So we we use the constitution. So we, every time things don't go okay, we go back and say, what does the constitution say? In, this, in November last year, we took a decision as the cabinet of Haute and said to any Simaile, please write again one more time to the city and give them instructions, what is called the directives, in the constitution section 1391A. Says, if you things are not going okay, you can go to a point where you start giving them instructions. Fix this thing, sort out that the people are complaining about. Do refuse removal, sort out the water problem, sort out this. The things which they know they must sort out. But you are putting it on record to them. The people are complaining about this, sort out that. So NEC Maile wrote the letter to them. Now the law says that communication must go to the council, not to the speaker. It's not for my private, it's for the, you know, uh, there are times where something is not for the, the priest, for the leader, not for the pastor, but it's for the whole congregation. I can let you. So they, so the MEC wrote, rise to them to say, cons, go to the council and sort out the following things. They don't take these things to the council, so they don't follow the law. They keep these things aside and write back to the MEC. The speaker writes back to the MEC and says to the MEC, no, virtually she just submits big files. The MEC wants to know, what have you done with all the things I said you must fix? She submits big files. When, so the MEC have got a strong team. They'll go through these files even if you think you can confuse them. In the files, they find that there's nothing. That's, that's implementing the directives. This is the first instruction, sort out this. And we know the municipality, the ups and downs, who are running, this in and out. So, so what will you do is after looking at that, as things are happening, as I say to you, there are other things that become worse in the process. When you go to communities in Swan, people complain about basic municipal functions. But then by the 
I know, you know, there used to be something that was called for the elderly people, it's for the indigents, the elderly people. Abakiria Dibela Kim. Every year at the end, you must be able to write off because kid indigents, kid a kid kutana, kid a tuasa seventy, but but we like to tell them Mandela. So I know in many areas where this used to be applied, things that. When you go there, they, they just tell you, people just tell you that no, the municipality is not really, it's not, I'm now owing 50,000 after. The old lady who really did it to um, My bill says I'm owing 50,000 premium. I cannot list the possession of the I cannot swim in the 50,000 here is a guy. And you know what the old people do? They will, they end up taking me in their bedrooms to see everything. Who but born out, how not they see, how not to take it somewhere, keep a galetcher at the echo. Who can now check a premium? I can, I can have business in one room. I can have anything. I can have an ababanga. I can have a bedroom. Come over. So, when you watch what you do with those. So, let me come to that. So, when, as the provincial government, we follow everything. Patience, patience, patience. So, we came to a decision last week, Wednesday. Hard for now. And let me tell you that this decision doesn't make uh, uh, people who were who, who, who are benefiting happy. I want to tell you, uh, it doesn't make people who are benefiting happy. We came, took a decision or no. We can't go. Parts of South Africa are being built in this city. Training Tsamuriki Automotive SEZ. Roslyn and Silverton. There are other important things that are happening in this. If you don't have a functioning because, and then Babamba, let me tell you, when, when we first did the first directives, the, a party that's running this municipality threatened. They had a press conference and said, if you intervene in Swan, we are going to go to court. Now let me tell you that we have intervened in several municipalities in Kaudi. When I was in in 2018, there was a lot of resistance from some of the people about that. We intervened and used the Constitution, Section 1391B and said this municipality cannot just do as it wishes. We must bring teams into the municipality. Because it's a small municipality, we must bring teams to help revive the systems in the municipality and do that. We did that intervention in 2018. That's the, mass, that's the municipality in the valley. Even today, there are still things we are sorting out in that municipality. At one time things are going okay, another time they just need you to, once you look that way, you come back, you find that they are back into that same uh, situation. And let me tell you, intervention is not nice. But that's what the constitution says you do. Is a municipality, it is quite clear now. Tell me, how else are we going to move forward in Swat? They tried one more meeting. How else are you going to move forward? If you don't allow the voice of the people to be heard. And that's why our intervention says no. So the, the, the provincial executive council, which is the cabinet of the province, considered several things. So we said, should we just allow it to go in the next 18 months for elections, we thought. How do we explain every day the water problem? How do we explain the clinic that's not open and the, we're just using the Hamanskra water problem? How do we say we are so insensitive that, well, let's just let them... It's not only there. I, I was in Atrechville opening a library last week, just last week. The sort of basic things that I complain about. So can we be so numb, so dead, that all we think is, uh, well, Let's, let them just have their jamboree, the charade.
Let them leave this uh, neither coming nor going. Because we must be afraid that we will be taken to court as if what we are doing is illegal. No. So we say, we decided, we are going to use the Constitution. And that intervention is, we dissolve the municipality. Let there be a fresh start. And let the people of Swan speak. We think the politicians have been speaking back, for, back and forth. Uh, let the people of Swan speak once and for all. And have an opportunity. When you have a stalemate, where a municipality grinds to a halt, you can, the Constitution says, allows that, that you can go back to the people. Instead of just trying to get the parties out maneuvering each other, these ones must work with these ones to take over. It, we must go back to the people. What? And in the meantime, what do we do? So the Constitution section 139 says to us, if you dissolve the municipality, you must appoint an administrator for 90 days. And, and we say we are not just appointing an administrator, we are appointing a team of administrative, competent administrators. So it's not just one person. So one of, some of those things we want sorted out are the most urgent things in Swat. We can't have the Hamas groundwater problem forever. We can't have the Lodium water problem, Atrechville water problem forever. We can't have some of this. So you have facilities that have been built that must be opened. They can't be occupied. They can't be used by communities because there's, they have been straight up as side off on those things. The city has a budget, but that budget is not approved. You know that. So when you intervene through section 139, it allows the administrator to put a budget that is just about fixing service delivery issues. Let me tell you, I've also been to the suburbs, by the way. Even people in the suburbs here in Swani complain about issues of service delivery, even in the suburbs. When, when things grind to a halt, they say to me, Premier, this is not about politics, it's not about which party. I, you know when we were working, there's an area in Silverton. Silverton, well, that's where we are working on this big project called the, the Tuani Automotive Hub. There were, there were group, there, were, there was a business chamber there made up of fellows, white South Africans. If, if, in case someone thinks this is just an issue of between black and white, it's not an issue of people. They were so fed up about the failure of the city to deal with the issues that about approving, dealing with the, that a business area is going down. They were so fed up those business people that they sent me messages saying to, to me, Premier, we don't want to hear anything about the city anymore. Can you do something about this? This is now affecting our businesses. So, ladies and gentlemen of the cloth, So today we are here to say to you, we have decided finally to institute what the Constitution says you must do when things reach a level of grinding to a halt in the municipality. We have made that decision. We have now written letters. The Constitution says, once you make that decision as the cabinet of a province, you don't have the final say. You hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Because we went according to the Constitution. It says you may make that decision, yes. Make the decision. You have the right to make the decision on whether you can place a municipality under administration one or administration two, or you just want a, a fresh elections. The Constitution says you can make that decision. But when you make that decision, you must inform the Minister of Local Government in South Africa. You must also inform the National Council of Provinces. You must inform the Speaker of your legislature when you have made that decision. You must also inform the, the affected municipality that we have made this decision about you. So I 
on, on Wednesday, we made the decision. On Friday, on Thursday, we announced the decision. On Friday, you saw. You saw. And then on Friday, no, on Thursday, we announced the decision. On Friday, we informed all those the Constitution says you must inform. The Constitution doesn't say, before you announce, you must first inform. I know there are Bush lawyers all over the place. You know, like Bush pastors. There are Bush pastors who make people to drink, to drink poisonous stuff and eat snakes. You know it. You know the Bush pastors. There are also Bush lawyers who run around and say, no, you were not supposed to make the decision, you must consult first. There's no such a thing in the Constitution. It, it says make the decision. When you have made the decision, you must inform. And when you have informed, you wait for 14 days to hear if those you have informed. It's on, it doesn't say the council must agree. It does not say that. Bush lawyers will think that the council must first agree. No, the constitution doesn't say that. It doesn't say the legislature must agree. It, all it says is the minister must concur, must agree. If she agrees, she will say so. If she doesn't agree, she will say so. Secondly, it says the NCOP, which is the National Council of Provinces, must also agree or not agree. But within 14 days, they must say so if they agree or not. If within 14 days they say nothing, we will appoint the administrator. And we are now preparing for 90 days. And the administrator will have to go and do the things that we want done. So what do we want the administrator to do? This HOD of COPTA, that's the head of department of the province, part of his job, his full-time job, is to make sure that the team of uh, the administrator and the team we are bringing to Tswani must make sure in 90 days they must help us clean the city. You know what? You know, this thing of cleaning the cities uh, is a very basic function of municipalities. Everywhere. How we are communicating, our people dump things everywhere. But we need a program that will ensure we involve the communities to clean. But the city must bring its own. You know, the city can't stay away from cleaning. And things, no, you blame the people, you don't want to do your job. No, go there. Leadership is about going to the people and saying to them, here you are doing wrong things. Here we want to work with you. We are bringing the equipment, we are bringing the trucks, we are bringing all to clean. So the program, so one of the priorities is cleaning the city. The second priority is to sort out the water problem in the city of Swan. This thing that the people of Hamanskrad up to this day are drinking dirty water. And then all we do is to argue about it. When every day I went to I went to Jubilee Hospital and saw people there who showed me their medical certificates. They get admitted into hospital because that water is polluted. They say to me, Premier, nobody is paying for our uh, nobody cares about what happens. We ourselves must worry about they showed me the water that has got wells in a bottle. And this, all you hear from the city leaders is that the water is clean. As if people are mad. We don't want the story from our the administrator and the, that they tell us after three months the water is okay. When the people of Amman's Grant say the water is not okay. But they must also come into the administration and fix the administration. There's irregular contracts that that have been done here. All those things of not following the Municipal Finance Management Act and not following various pieces of legislation, they must also fix the city. But they must ensure that the budget is spent. We've got housing problems in this city. The housing budget can be returned to national government. There's also the transport budget. Again, it is a grant that comes from national government. 
gets given only to the metros, not all municipalities. That money must be spent to ensure there's transport. There are people, I know there are areas where there's no proper transport system in the city. But at the end of three months, when they have sorted out the internal issues of the city, we must have a proper leadership elected by the people. Elections are unavoidable. When democracy grinds to a halt, the only last, last thing you do is to go back to the people and say, this one, come, we're bringing it back to you, can only be resolved by you about proper governance in the city of Tswane. So, Bahulubak, religious leaders of all denominations, of all faiths in the city of Tswane, that's why we've called you. And I want to emphasize, we thought we should start with you because you are the custodians of the truth. I am telling you that there is a word inside you that tells you to speak the truth. Sometimes even when you don't want it, you are people of truth. We, start, we thought we should start with you. We don't worry. You are in communities from tomorrow. We have meetings all over the city to talk to Umpakati, yeah. to talk to the communities of Twa. We've got meetings all over the city. And we thought we should start with you. And this city is a great city. The city of Twa is a great city. It contributes 9% to the national economy of South Africa and 25% to the economy of our province. This is a great city, and it must be governed properly. If it, if it is to help us meet its and this is a city with the largest number of educated people in South Africa. The, the level of education, and you know how it is, it has got a lot of history. The largest number of educated people are found in this city, especially educated black South Africans if we were to look at the history and say, discount the fact that it's not the opportunities for education was not there for everybody. So this city can be fixed. And this city must be fixed. It must be fixed. There's no turning back. You know when, when the children of Israel reached that place, that, that the Red Sea, eh? We are not turning back. We are not going back to Israel. I mean, to Egypt. We are not going back to Egypt. <laughs> to be scared that we will be taken to court and then say that hey, this, uh, this intervention must be suspended and then leave the people on their own to their own devices. How many chaos? How many chaos? If people just start to take the law into their own hands, but no what our office is what you want When there is, when things start to heat up like they happened in 2016, so if, if there are those who are afraid about being taken to court, I want to say to you, my dear I am ready to be hauled before the courts. On this issue of time, I am ready to be held before the courts. I'm not going to be threatened as the premier of Houtier by people who think that the courts is only their purview and we, we don't use the law. But to do these things, we also need, we need cool heads. And you know, the, the, you, the religious leaders, this is where the cool heads start. You, they, they start here. Uh, because if the communities are up in arms, but you remember what Having to to which is what diary every day of Wabaritzilla, or city I believe, you Because I know your role. I've called you here because I know your role. You are leaders of our. 
You can't just sit back. Everybody was losing hope and just thinking, hey, it's a good thing. 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 No, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And it stops here. All this rough, rough must stop here and then we move forward. We take this city to where this city must go. But we can't do that as the government. We need support of genuine community leaders who have the interests of communities at heart. Not, not sources who are going to go, but not mislead that community. Uh, going into communities to mislead them for their own interests. So thank you so much for turning up in your large numbers. You are here in really, really large numbers. I want to suggest that uh, MEC, MEC, Taya, Taya, MEC. What's up? Son, what's up, son? It's the same people say son. So this MEC, in addition to her other portfolios, one of the from Pamudi, Mohaute, in cabinet, I have appointed her, knowing her that she fears God. I have appointed her to work with religious leaders in the whole world. She carries herself well. She carries herself well with a great deal of dignity. She can work with religious leaders and she respects all leaders of all faiths. Okay. She's a Christian, but she respects Muslims. She respects Hindus. She respects all faith. She, even our traditional, African traditional church, she respects them. So she can work with all. So I said to MEC, before we go and talk to communities, let's start with the religious leaders. The people responsible for keeping order and peace in our communities will be the point of entry for us because they will also tell us the truth that we may not know. And they have no hidden agendas. And that's why we are starting with you today. So let me see, I would like to hear, I do want like to hear from, from the people here. My meeting is only at 19 hours. My next meeting, community meeting, to, uh, that's Lodium because there's big problems of water. Tomorrow morning we are in Hammanskral. In the afternoon we are, I'm in Hammanskral tomorrow morning. I'm coming to that clinic because I want that clinic to be the priority of the administrator. After that, I'm going to Mawiga, the problems that I saw there. But the emissaries will be everywhere tomorrow. But we want to hear from you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. So if we can allow some of the religious leaders who are gathered here to be able to give us some, some words of wisdom. We want to listen to you uh, before we go to, to the next uh, step. Oh, Muruti Kumole. Hey, Muruti, please stand up. How are you? <laughs> you don't know Muruti is the one of the church in uh, in Mamilod where the people work. But when he says he's tired, the people live in his church. They live there in his church. Because he's a man of God, he can't chase them away unless he knows where they are going and that they will be safe where they are going. Uh, so I am back in your hands, MEC. Thank you, Premier Sebong Akulu. You will let me be.